Namaste aus Indien. Herzlich willkommen bei uns im Schokoladentheater und im S-Bahn Tiergarten. Indien, ein Land, das im Norden ziemlich kalt ist, aber im Süden tropisch heiß. Ideale Bedingungen für Spitzenkakao, aber natürlich auch für Bananen, für Kaffee und Gewürze. Reisen Sie mit mir heute in ein Land, wo Spitzenkakao herkommt und der Pfeffer wächst. India is a country of contrasts. It features not only bustling, noisy cities, but also stretches of almost idyllic rural landscapes. No wonder that the people of Kerala in southern India call their homeland God's own country. Many farmers in Kerala still practice traditional agriculture and mixed farming. A variety of plants grow in the shade of large trees. Tropical fruit, spices such as nutmeg and pepper, as well as coffee and cocoa. The Styrian chocolatier is constantly on the lookout for ways to make his chocolate even better and is excited to see what India offers. But first, he has to fight his way through India's true jungle. Jungle. Mr. Sauter, uh, we are going to present our activities to you. These are the producers from that location. Joseph Sauter has come to visit the organic pioneer Bijaman Kurian and sound him out. Can he supply cocoa of the quality demanded by Sauter chocolate? Things are a little hot. Little? Over fermented. Yeah, over fermented. Ah, that is what? That is over fermented. Yeah. This is very good. This is very good. Yeah. These are very, very good. That's not so good. This is very perfect. Okay. That's very, really great. It's not a problem. This one. No, this is a, this is beautiful cacao. Cocoa originates from the other side of the world, from Central America. But the Olmecs, who lived 3,000 years ago, loved the taste of spicy chocolate. They added water and chili to their cocoa, rather than milk and sugar. The Mayas too were fans of spicy chocolatl, and the Aztecs even used cocoa as currency. One cocoa bean was worth one tomato, and a hundred beans bought you a rabbit. Chocolate has always been something special, the food of the gods. But when the Spanish arrived in America, they had no idea what to do with the bitter beans, so they mixed them with sugar. In Europe, chocolate was initially only for the rich, where it had the aura of a forbidden drug. It was even believed to be an aphrodisiac, and so not for the common people. It was only in the 19th century and the discovery of cocoa butter that chocolate became a product for the masses. Wherever it grows, cocoa bursts with a multitude of flavors, and ideally, it tastes of its country of origin. This is a hopeful sign for India, the country of spices. Here in the land of cinnamon and star anise, turmeric and pepper, cardamom and chili, cocoa has found a new home. Joseph Tzotta is on its trail, tasting the scents of southern India in the spice shops of Kerala. so und herumschaut da in den Kakaogärten, wo dann die Ananas und die Papayas und die Bananen und die Kokospalmen nebenan stehen und irgendwie 
habe ich immer wieder das Gefühl, also in tropischen Zonen, da ist das Paradies wirklich angekommen. Schau, der Zotter. Das gibt es ja nicht, lauter Vierblättrige. Na Wahnsinn, das Paradies, schau. Also mehr Glück kann man nicht mehr haben. But of course you can. For Joseph Zotter, true happiness is a ripe and aromatic cocoa pod. Simply heaven. Mm. So this is how the Garden of Eden must have looked. And it is exactly here that Coco feels most at home, in the shade of large trees. Its scented flowers grow directly from the trunk, even though its pods are ripening at the same time. Coco may grow all year round, but there are two main harvests, one shortly before the monsoon period and another in winter. A cocoa grove is a firework of colors, whether forestero, criollo, trinitario, or a melonado. Nature simply bursts with color. It's like magic. The fertile soil and the warm southern Indian sun are all that's needed for a bean to grow into a cocoa plant. Under the shade only we can cultivate, we can plant the um, cocoa seedlings because uh, cocoa seedlings want uh, minimum one year, first year wants a good shade. So we keep uh, this area for the new cocoa seedlings. The best chocolate demands the best cocoa. And you only get the best cocoa when you take special care in growing the plant. Mein Traumziel wäre halt, dass jede Plantage seinen eigenen Klon hat. Weil logischerweise die Erdbeschaffenheit, die Bodenbeschaffenheit immer anders ist. Das sehen wir ja zu Hause in unseren Gärten auch. Nicht? Man, kann ja heute, man kann ja Pflanzen irgendwo hinsetzen, das eine Jahr wächst es an der Stelle super, nächstes Jahr setzt es zwei Meter weiter und wächst nicht so super. Das hat eben mit der Bodenbeschaffenheit was zu tun. Also man kann nicht von auswärts Pflanzen herbringen und einfach da reinknallen und eine Plantage machen, sondern es wäre besser aus der Plantage, aus dieser Biodiversität, das Genmaterial, wenn man das jetzt ein bisschen hochtrabend äh, formuliert, was es ja ist, äh, herauszieht. Und man kann es schon so sagen, also jeder Kakaokern hat die Erbinformation der nächsten 1000 Jahre in sich. Ich glaube, die Natur ist so fantastisch, wir müssen sie nur leben lassen. In return, nature presents us with ripe and aromatic pods. Expert knowledge is crucial even at the harvesting stage, for only the ripest pods may be picked. This work cannot be automated, as it requires experience and a feel for the fruit. Coco farmer Thomas opens the collected pods and takes out the beans, together with the white pulp, the fresh flesh which surrounds the seeds. Farmer Joseph Kokata Mundayil also examines the ripe fruit. He also grows Criolio, which is one of the most aromatic varieties of cocoa. This is also much appreciated by his four legged connoisseurs, who take a delight in the leftovers. The farmers bring the cocoa beans to central collecting points, where they are weighed and paid for. The price for the best quality of organic beans is twice the world market price. 
This motivates the farmers to continue concentrating on quality. But this only works when everyone plays their part. Das Wichtigste ist der Kakaobauer, dass dem gut geht, dass der das gern macht, dass er seinen Kakao kennt und das halt einfach gern macht. Ähm, der Produzent ist natürlich auch wieder wichtig, weil der natürlich etwas macht, der kann das ja beeinflussen. Ja, und dann natürlich der Konsument, weil der Konsument ist die Gottheit überhaupt, weil der entscheidet, ob das Produkt existiert oder nicht, weil ohne Konsumenten äh, geht überhaupt nichts. Weil mit seinem Euro natürlich, der hat einen Lenkungseffekt. Mit dem unterstützt er ein System. And the Joseph Zotter system is organic farming and fair trade. A welcoming reception for the guest from far away Europe. An office is opened with joyful celebration. It was built with funding from the fair trade premium. Fair Trade Premium guarantees that there is enough money available for infrastructure projects. One such project is the purchase of a small truck, which makes the farmers' work easier. Money from the Fair Trade Premium also supports social projects, such as schools. Es ist interessant, dass man darüber reden muss, also über Fair Trade. Das ist ja wohl das Selbstverständlichste eigentlich der Welt. Man muss sich vorstellen, nur 1% des Weltkakaoanbaus ist fair gehandelt und 99% ist eben nicht fair gehandelt. Und dort brauche ich eine Frage mehr stellen, was heißt das, was bedeutet das? Das bedeutet Ausbeuten, das bedeutet äh, Ungleichgewicht, das bedeutet ständige Bedrohungen. Und es muss einen Ausgleich geben. We have to pay a, a decent uh, uh, salary to workers and also we don't have any child labor uh, uh, and uh, any forced labor and uh, we have a very good uh, code of ethics in our our uh, system und man kann auch nicht ein bisschen bio sein und ein bisschen fair und man kann auch nicht nur fair sein und nicht bio und umgekehrt also es ist eigentlich wenn wir von ökologischer produktion reden dann gehört fair trade eigentlich selbstverständlich dazu Organic farming and fair trade are the two sides of the Zotta chocolate coin. It doesn't require much to manage this cocoa grove organically, but nonetheless, the production of organic fertilizer goes on at a pace. Dried cow dung is spread under the cocoa trees together with the empty husks of the cocoa pots. This is enough to ensure good harvests without the use of chemical fertilizers. There are regular checks to ensure that everything is being done properly. Der allergrößte Teil ist leider Gottes natürlich von Bio weit entfernt. Logischerweise wird da in der Monokultur noch einmal ärger gespritzt, noch einmal ärger und brutaler gearbeitet. Es ist immer die große Frage, ist biologisch die Welt zu ernähren in Zukunft? Also ich glaube, es ist einfach die einzige Möglichkeit, weil im Sinne des Generationenvertrags sozusagen braucht man eigentlich überhaupt nicht darüber nachdenken, dass Bio die einzige Form der landwirtschaftlichen Produktion in Zukunft nur sein kann. Und da bin ich tausend Prozent überzeugt. Hospitality is important in Kerala. And so Joseph Zotter is often invited to visit his cocoa farmers in their homes. Hi. He's uh, Mrs. Jebel. Joseph is my name. <laughs> nice to meet you. Thank you so much. Almost everything being served grows right outside the doorstep. It's simple but tasty cuisine.
But you won't find such idyllic conditions everywhere in India. Modern India battles against environmental pollution and an increasing gap between rich and poor. Also das, was natürlich sehr augenscheinlich ist, ist äh, definitiv der Konsum, der hier startet. Also der scheint mir in Zukunft gefährlich zu werden. Vor allem, äh, wenn man sieht, also jetzt schon, also auf der Straße, bei den Märkten, überall dieses, diesen unglaublichen Mülldruck, wenn man das einmal so äh, sagen will. Also wenn das so weitergeht mit dem Konsum, man muss sich das einmal wirklich vorstellen, was das für eine Dimension hat. But back to the cocoa, which still has a long way to go. The most important stage is yet to come, fermentation. This involves piling up the beans and then turning them daily to ensure they ferment evenly. The fermentation process is decisive in determining the quality and taste of the chocolate, making Farmer Thomas's role here an extremely responsible one. This is, these are the yeah, same lot, yeah, fresh, yeah. and uh, the other heaps, that, that is almost finished, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, we can try it. Uh, ah, so you put out it? Yeah, uh, put it, trying. and we'll check it uh, whether it is good, then we will uh, put it outside for drying. That's, that's the way, yeah. the sun drying. Yeah. Normally, a lot of cocoa beans are drying with machines. Yes. And uh, this is the better way. It is uh, it's slowly, yes. it is a longer time, but the flavor is... Maybe so good, really better. So good. These cocoa beans are hand-picked in the truest sense of the word, for this is the only way of guaranteeing that no substandard beans accidentally end up in the bag. And to play it safe, Farmer Thomas makes regular random checks. He opens the beans and examines the quality of the fermentation. If the beans are chocolate brown rather than violet, then everything is fine. What we need is um, the high quality in cocoa beans. And so I saw you make a really, really high quality. That's, uh, that's the fun for us when we had good uh, cocoa beans so we can produce very, very good chocolate, you know? Uh, actually, Papa started, uh, Papa is in the field since 90, last, last 90s, 70s. Oh, yeah. uh, I taught, uh, he taught how to um, uh, make cocoa, dry, good quality cocoa beans. Good quality, yes. And I am practicing it. And he, this small, small boys, they are also yes. seeing this. That's the way. Yeah, so after that, they are like, like it. They will continue this. Thank you so much. <laughs> the cocoa is harvested, fermented, dried, and examined. Each delivery is recorded to the smallest detail, so that it can be traced back to the individual farmer. Transparency is the basis for trust. We are teaching our farmers to produce for you also. The farmer is producing organic product and he is uh, consuming the organic producers. So we teach all the small farmers, you produce, you eat and you sell it. Ich glaube, die Kakaobauern da sind gleich motiviert wie ich. Ich gehe jetzt nach Hause und mache meine Arbeit, weil ich kann nicht Kakao machen. Ich kann nur Schokolade versuchen, so gut als möglich herzustellen. Wir brauchen die Natur, wir müssen schauen, dass dieser Planet besser wird, wie er jetzt ist. Wenn der faire Handel dann irgendwann in 50 Jahren nicht mehr notwendig ist, wäre ich auch froh, weil die ganze Welt fair handelt. Das wäre natürlich ein Traum. It's time to say goodbye and look forward with anticipation to the cocoa delivery from Kerala. But it wouldn't be India if there wasn't a touch of magic in the air.
old colonel. Lead in. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know.